Hi guys. Several people are struggling with my homemade electric motor powered car that I did last year. They don't seem to be able to understand the concept of how it works. So I thought I might assemble this kit that I bought in a bargain store, sorry, charity shop. It cost me £1.99. Build your own electric motor. Now this one well, electric motors all follow the same principle. This one is the opposite to the one that I made for the car. The one that I made for the car, the magnets spin and the electromagnetic coil stays still. On this one, the electromagnetic coils are in the middle, so they spin and the magnets are on the outside and they stay still. It's the same principle and this is probably the more common way of them working. So we'll assemble this. We'll follow the instructions. It's a kit. If I can get the box open. Those are the bits for making the motor. That's the actual polystyrene boat. And there's the instructions. So I'll go through it and make it as per instructions. This may take more than one video session. I may have to split it over several episodes. But let's get started. First need to check that we've got all the bits that are in the kit. Battery holder, armature plates. We actually have to make the armature out of individual metal plates. Brass bushes. Can't clearly see them. There should be three of one type and two of another. I can see one, two, three, four. We'll assume they're all there because the bag is still sealed. Front spacer and rear spacer. Spacer ring. Spacer cap. Propeller. Compass needle. Can't see that, we'll worry about that later. Oh, yeah, there it is, it's in, in the middle of that lot. Uh, wire. Two magnets, I can see them in there. Don't know what that piece is. And some sandpaper. And the shaft. So it looks like we've got all the bits. Slide the motor shaft through the holes. Yep, that feels like a nice loose fit.
OK. Prepare the motor base. There's no point in you trying to read the instructions with me because you can't see them. Put the two brushes into the base. OK, we need to identify which is the two brushes. will be the two brushes. They go into the plastic there. That's the two brushes in place. There's lots more writing here, I'm not gonna, as I say, I'm not going to read it all out to you. Cut off two pieces of wire from the coil of wire. Each piece should be nine inches long. Okay. Nine inches. So our two pieces of wire, nine inches long. Fold the sandpaper with the rough side inside. Place the end of one piece of wire in the fold of the sandpaper. What we're doing is we're cleaning the insulation off the outside of the wire, because this is um, coated wire. A little bit later in the video I'll remember what it's called. <laughs> have to strip about an inch of it, it says there. Otherwise you won't be able to make contact. Sandpaper all four ends. This video is definitely going to take more than one episode because that's nine minutes gone and we haven't even really got started. My tea is ready as well. My wife's just called up the stairs. So we'll just finish doing this bit, and I'll stop for my tea. Right, we have to wrap the end of the wire around the brush, that's the brush.
important. That's not going to help, bending it like that. leads back towards there, uh, put it through one of the little side holes. Ah, that's these holes here. I assume this is just to anchor it in place. holding it in place because the battery will go there in a minute but I'll stop at that point and have my dinner I've had my dinner so we can carry on okay where were we up to bring the wires out Here the battery holder. That's this piece. Take two of the battery contacts and bend the wide ends around a pencil. Right, these are the battery contacts. Bend them around a pencil. and bend the notched ends up. That's it. Bend them out like that so that you can get the wire around them. Take the third battery contact, the unbent one, and wrap the bare end of one of the battery wires round the notched contact. Like that, because this will be the on off switch. In other words, you're going to push it in there, I guess. Wrap the 
the bare end of the other one in there. Let's turn the page. Prepare armature for winding. The main part of the motor, wound with wire, that actually does the spinning is known as the armature. Okay, that's all these bits. Take the rear spacer and slip it, the end tube side first, onto the end of the motor shaft without the dents. Right, the motor shaft's got some dents at one end and not at the other end. So that'll be place the rear, take the rear spacer, slip it on. Slide it all the way up the shaft. Let's just check I've got the right piece. Rear spacer, front spacer. Right, I've got the wrong piece. That's the rear spacer. It says it has a shorter tube than the front spacer. That's right. So that's the one with the shorter tube. Slide it on the shaft. And slip it all the way up the spacer, up to the dents. And then slip the tip of the tube over the dents. Yes, done that. So that the dents hold the spacer in place. Okay, this is going to take quite a while to build this. Take the ten armature plates and stack them one on top of the other. Note that each plate has a tiny notch on the edge of its three T-shapes. These notches should line up. There's a tiny little notch just there.
just rereading this. It doesn't actually say slide them on there yet. It just says stack them up. Better try and do it exactly what it says in the book, can I? It says you can slide a pencil up between to hold them in place, like that. 